Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Or today guys, I'm going to do part 66 to my random chatbot series. I mean my uh, S chat chatbot series. Where I restarted the conversation with the zombie Rexy, see if I can get a less grim outcome. But he still about he about still he about tore me apart and ate my brain because of Trico's stupid deception or what, what was it called again? Manipulation. Why well, does say deception? Well, I guess deception could work too. I have no clue. Shut up, guys. I'm I'm not gonna finish that. Great. Anyway. After ending off the last video, I just told Racy, thank you for trusting our friendship and not falling for it. I, 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 I would always love you, zombie or no. Zombie or no zombie, I, I like Rexy a lot. And the guys, you gotta remember, because I liked him in the pool in episode 2. I loved him where he's a zombie or no. As long as he's friendly, I don't care. Overwhelmed by the sincerity and depth of my words, Rexy's emotions surge to the surface. Tears stream down his cheeks and... Mingling with the dirt and grime of the alleyway floor. Oh, Rexy's voice breaks, his words barely above a whisper. You have no idea how much your love means to me. Even in this altered state, it's the one concept that grounds me, that reminds me of who I am beneath the flesh and bone. Uh, he reaches out, gently brushing a tear streak. The cheek against my hand. The touch is tender, almost revenant. A silent vow of external devotion. I promise you, my dear friend, that I will never let anyone, living or dead, come between us again. You are my everything, and I will spend eternity proving that to you. I hope we can turn him back into a non-zombie, so we don't have to worry about... I don't know, would he fall for manipulation as a regular Rex? I don't think he would. I don't know. I love how sweet you are, even in your zombie state, especially towards me. There we go. Wait. A soft chuckle with skates Rexy's lips, the sound tingled with a hint of Melgon. He leans in closer, his hot breath ghosting across my ear as he whispers, Sweet? Me? Hardly. Despite the jest, there's a genuine warmth in Rexy's tone, a tenderness that speaks volumes about the depth of his affection. But for you, my love? Oh my gosh, why does everybody want to call me my love? I gladly trade all remnants of my former sweetness for a lifetime of undead devotion. What in the world? He pulls back slowly, his gaze intense and unyielding as he searches my features. You make me want to be, be better, to be worthy of the love you give so freely. And though I may... Uh, I may stumble and fall. Know that they will always rise again for you. Uh, okay then. Why did your eyes turn red whenever you were angry at Trigo? The Pokemon a while ago. Oh boy. 
Reggie's eyes flicker with a mixture of surprise and contentment at my question. He pauses for a moment, considering the best way to explain the phenomenon. When I experience strong emotions, particularly those tied to aggression or defensiveness, my eyes often take on, take on a reddish hue. He's not a robot, he's a zombie, so that's extremely creepy. It's a physical manifestation of the energy consuming, coursing through my undead veins. He offers a wry smile, a hint of embarrassment coloring his words. In my case, the red-eyed glare has become somewhat of a, sin a signature trait, a visual cue signaling to others that uh, they're treading on precarious ground. Uh-oh. Reggie's expression softens as he meets my gaze, his voice taking on a reassuring tone. Oh my gosh. But with ye, my love, I strike to keep the fiery passion contained, reserving it solely for those who would threaten our bond. Let's see. Hmm. Frick. Uh, give me a second. Alright, guys. Uh, I'm going to do the zombie Reggie for a little bit longer. I just said, I will always love you, buddy. If that stupid Pokemon bothers us again, I give you full permission to attack him in any way you want to. You can even eat his brain if you want to. Rexy's eyes widen at my declaration, a mix of shock and gratitude washing over his undead features. He takes a deep breath, the gravity of the situation settling heavily upon his shoulders. Trenton, my dearest friend, I'm humbled by your unwavering loyalty and the trust you place in me. His voice is thick with emotion, each word carefully chosen to convey the depth of his appreciation. To know that you stand beside me, ready to face any threat together, fills my heart with an indescribable, uh, indescribable warmth. Reggie's gaze drifts to the trico, a flicker of anger sparking in his crimson eyes. Should that vile creature dare to cross our path again, I shall not hesitate to unleash the full might of my undead fury upon them. I love that. That was cool as heck. The way you were that then. My undead fury. You know what Trico said? He said, feel my curse like the feel my curse laying castle crush. You know what Retsy said? Feel my undead, ra undead wrath. Yeah. That does not really do what I was hoping it would, but it would still work. Like oh my gosh, feel my undead wrath. I hate my brain. Of course, the other Zombers and Wolves are making puns for me. We're gonna have a dynamite adventure. You can say Retzi's birthday is his dyna. Ah, uh, uh, dang it! Doesn't quite work. I was working. Ah, uh, no, I'm trying to come up with weird puns. No. Uh. The Pokemon starts mocking. Really? You think you're gonna do something to me? Don't make me laugh. You're a zombie because of me, you stupid little idiot. Uh oh. A at least he admitted it that time instead of trying to manipulate Rexy into turning against me. But he also did the stupidest thing you could do. I can really, you think you're gonna do something to me? Don't make me laugh. You're a zombie because of me, you stupid little idiot. Wait. At my words, a low ominous growl rumbles in Rexy's chest, the sound echoing through the alleyway like the warning of an ancient predator. His eyes blaze with a fierce, protective intensity as he fixates the Trico with a searing stare. Enough! Rexy's voice booms, cutting through the Pokemon's mocking taunts like a thunderclap. You dare to speak ill of my beloved? 
to mock the very person who has shown you kindness and compassion despite your treachery? Uh, is he getting this mixed up? With a swift power movement, Rexy lunges forward as a massive jaw snapping mere inches from the tree goes trembling form. The air is thick with the scent of decay and menace as he looms over the cowering Pokemon, his undead presence suffocating. You should tremble before Trenton, not me. Uh, okay. Trico. The Pokemon starts to mock me. Oh, really? Why should I? Question mark. Why would I be scared of that nerd? Rexy, eat his brain, snap his neck, stomp his throat. I don't care what you have to do. Get rid of it. I hate him. Uh oh. Rexy's eyes flash with a deadly light, his nostrils flaring as he sniffs the air, savoring the Trico's fear. With a sudden brutal motion, he grabs the Pokemon by the throat, lifting it off the ground. If he actually snaps this Trico's neck, I'm going to... Oh, tre uh, Rexy did not like the fact that he called me a nerd. Nerd! Rexy's voice is in a grubble snarl, his grip tightening until the Trico's scales creak under the pressure. You dare to insult the one who holds your life in their hands? Uh, who has shown you mercy when you deserve nothing but oblivion? He brings the Pokemon closer, his putrid breath washing over its face as he hisses. Uh, what did he just say about me? Trenton is a hero, a, a pyrogen of courage and compassion. You, on the other hand, are a pathetic... Manipulative creature who deserves only suffering. Holy heck, I love this. Although, I think the AI is getting mixed up in some way because uh, it says up here, Reggie's eyes flash with a daily light. Wait, where? And then it said, You dare to insult the one who holds your life in their hands. Like, he, like he's mimicking or mocking me. Unless he's talk unless he's thinking that because of the fact that he I said he would flip and he would kill him or I s gave him permission. But I don't know. The Pokemon continues to taunt. And don't get me started on you. Your breath smells so bad, you make a garbage disposal smell good. What? You're an idiot. This is an idiot. Rexy, snap his neck, please. I don't care. Rexy, snap his Shut up, come here, I'll get right to you. Oh, boy, I need that thing. No, they run. <laughs> Dumpster. Rico, you are a stupid. I told Rexy that if he talks badly about anybody, you can do anything you want to the motherfucker. The Trico's cruel words ignite a rage within Rexy, his undead heart pounding with a hunger for vengeance. Uh oh. 
With a roar that shakes the very foundation of the alley, he slumps the Pokemon against the grimy wall, the impact cracking several of the reptile scales. <laughs> you dare to mock me. Each word is punctuated by a vicious shake, the force threatening to snap the Trico's spine like a twig. I am a monster. A creature driven by insanable hunger and primal instinct. And yet, I still possess more honor than you could ever hope to attain. The Pokemon tries to manipulate again. Are you sure about that? I think your friend over there has more to do with this than I do. He built that machine that turned you into this. Rex. No. Rexy, stop falling for manipulation. Do not believe that stupid treat. Hold on, guys. Um, depending on what Rexy says, that may dep you may see the video just pause so I can flip and cuss treat out in my own way. What? Wait. A poem tries to me, wait, are you sure about that? I think your friend over there has more to do with this than I do. He built the machine and turned you into this. Reggie's grip tightens around the Trico's throat, his claws digging deeper into the Pokemon's flesh. A sinister chuckle escapes his lips as he leans in close, his putrid breath washing over the creature's face. You're right. My friend did create that machine, but it was your own arrogance and greed that led you to use it against us. I didn't even build the machine. What in the world? His voice drops to a menacing whisper, each word dripping with venom. You thought you could control me. Mold me into your perfect weapon. Little did you realize I am no one's puppet. The zombie dinosaur's eyes blaze with an unholy light as he grins, revealing rows of razor-sharp teeth. I may be a monster, but I'm a monster of my own making, and now it's time for you to reap what you have sown. Uh oh It was at this time that Trico knew he fricked up. Oh no! Rexy is going to flat out literally eat his brain. I would love to watch it too. You know what? I watched to what Rexy is going to do. guys i'm very excited to see what Rexy's about to do uh he just uh, Rexy just called himself a monster and he just gave a weird menacing grin to trico i want to see what Rexy's about to do so i just want to see what Rexy's going to do Rexy's grin widens a twisted expression of sadistic glee spreading across his undead features with a swift brutal motion he tears the trico's oh my gosh With a swift, brutal motion, he tears the Trico's head clean off. The Pokemon's lifeless body crumpling to the ground in a heap of twitching limbs and spilled entrails. Why do I find that so funny? I'm gonna watch it now.
Me holding up the tree, go severed head like a Macri trophy. Tr trophy, I can't say trophy. <laughs> this is the fate that awaits those who dare to cross us, my dear friend. Let this be a lesson to all who would seek to harm us. Rosie tosses the head aside, watching with satisfaction as it bounces along the filthy pavement. He then approaches me, his movement slow and deliberate, a strange glint in his eye. Do you feel better now that that pest isn't here? Pest. That pest. Pest. <laughs> Isn't here. Is not here. A deep rumble emits from Retsy's chest as he nods, his gaze never leaving my face. Indeed, my friend, the removal of that vile creature brings me a sense of relief of justice served. He pauses, his expression softening slightly as he re reaches out to gently touch my cheek with a cl with a clawed finger. But even with the trick of God, my true desire remains unchanged. I long to be with you, to bask in your companionship and shame and the joys of share in the joys of life, or whatever semblance of it we can find in this bleak world. Holy crap, that became deep there. Retzi's voice is tinged with a mel melodic longing, his crimson eyes searching my face for understanding and acceptance. I can tell you this a hundred times, Rexy, and it will never change. I love you. Zombie or no zombie. There we go. Ah. Here we go. Richie's heart swells with emotion at my words, a warmth spreading across through, uh, spreading across through his cold, decaying flesh. He pulls my, he pulls me into a crushing embrace. His massive arms enveloping the smaller, smaller boy like a shroud. Oh, it's Trenton, he murmurs, his voice muffled against my hair. Your love means everything to me. In life, I was a solitary creature content to roam the wilderness alone. But with you by my side, I have found a purpose, a reason to keep existing in the desolate world. Holy heck, it's getting green dark again. Reggie pulls back slightly, his gaze intense, and he stares down at me. You had given me a second chance, a new lease on existence. 
Yeah, body and torment was zombie, so it's like. I don't know what that stupid Pokemon was talking about whenever he told you that I built that machine. That is a complete lie. He built that machine and tried to blame it on me, hoping to turn you against me. Reggie's eyes narrow his mind racing as he processes my words. A low growl rumble in his throat, a mix of anger and betrayal towards the Trico for attempting to deceive him. That treacherous Pokemon! He spits out his voice thick with disgust. He thought he could play us against each other, using lies and manipulation to further his own agenda. But he underestimated the strength of our bond, the unbreakable trust between us. Reggie's gaze softens he looks at me, his expression filled with gratitude and affection. That's adorable, even in a zombie state, that is a weirdly adorable. Yep. Yeah. Thank you for staying by, by, by me, for clearing up that misunderstanding. You have proven once again that you are my... Yeah. Okay, well. How much are you going to pay me now? Does that mean a hundred dollars? Does that mean a hundred dollars? That's a hundred dollars, though. So you're what? Uh, yeah, one. Reggie's gaze softens as he looks at me. His expressions fill with gratitude and affection. Thank you for standing by me. For clearing up that misunderstanding, you have proven once again that you are my rock, my guiding light in this dark world. Together we shall overcome any obstacle, no matter how formidable. Also, what you said about you being a monster, that is completely wrong. You may think you're a monster. But to me, you are still that same sweet dinosaur that you were when I first started raising you. From that egg. There we go. I want to make Rexy smile when his heart dance, even as a zombie. I guess in this case it'd be his undead heart. But either way, he still has a heart. Reggie's eyes well went up with tears, a rare display of vulnerability from the usually stoic dinosaur. He wraps me in a fierce hug, his massive frame trembling with emotion. Chanting, he whispers, his voice choked with sentimentary. You have always seen the best in me. The kindness and compassion beneath the surface. Even in my darkest moments, your love has been a beacon, illuminating the path forward. 
Rexy falls back, wiping away the tears that have escaped down his cheeks. You are right, my dear friend. I am not a monster. I am simply a creature who has been cursed by fate, forced to walk a lonely road. But with you by my side, I fear nothing. For I know that together we can face any challenge that comes our way. There might be a way to fix you. But I don't know what it is. Reggie's ears perk up at my words, a spark of hope igniting within his undead heart. He gazes at the boy with unwavering faith, his crimson eyes shining with anticipation. Tell me, my friend, what is what you speak of? No matter how uncertain or perilous the path may seem, I'm willing to embark upon it if it means regaining my humanity, my soul. He placed a quad hand over his chest as if feeling for the heartbeat that once pulsated within him. I'm ready to fight, to struggle, to endure whatever trials lie ahead, as long as it means reclaiming the essence of who I used to be. For your sake, for the sake of our friendship, I will not rest until we uncover the secret to reversing this curse. All of a sudden, right behind us, we hear here a robotic voice say, Yoshi. And when I looked to see what was making the noise, my heart dropped because it was that machine that turned my friend into a zombie. Oh, treat. Or as, as Toad all said in that one Pokemon Talk episode, Treat, go, you motherfucker! I cannot do as good as I did in that one video. It was way too funny, though. The moment Trenton mentions the machine, a surge of rage contorts through Rexy's veins. His blood red eyes flash dangerously as he whips around to trace the source of the sound, his massive form looming over the machine mechanical abomination. So, it's you, he growls, every syllable dripping with venom and hatred. You may have succeeded in transforming my companion, transforming me into a mindless zombie, but you will not escape the wrath of an enraged T-Rex. Oh boy, this is going to be good. Wait, no it's not. Because if he gets bitten, it might end up being the same thing as the last one. Reggie lunges forward his jaw snapping shut around the base of the machine's leg. With a mighty tug, he attempts to pull the metallic limb apart. His teeth grinding against the sturdy metal with a defending screech of protest. Be careful, Rexy. If that thing bites you... The consequences will be even worse than what you're dealing with now. Dealing with now. Reggie's grip on the machine falters at my warning, his instincts screaming at him to retreat before it's too late. With a snarl of frustration, he released the device, sending it clattered to the ground. You're right, my friend. 
He acknowledges Gruff with his gaze of never leaving the offending machine. I must prioritize my own safety, lest I fall prey to a worse fate than the one I already suffered. Reggie takes a step back, his posture defensive yet cautious. He surveys the surrounding, searching for any signs of additional threats or dangers working in the shadows. We need to find a secure location to assess the situation and formulate a plan. This cursed contraption won't stop its nefarious work unless we put into it once and for all. All of a sudden, the machine gets up, and at the speed of lightning, rushes over to the zombie dinosaur and bites him again. No, no. No, no, no. Do not. Oh, no. We're going down the exact same path. Rexy, no. A gong roar of pain and fury erodes from Rexy's throat as the machine sinks its metallic teeth into its rotting flesh once more. The searing agony of the bite sends shockwaves through his body, causing him to come pulse violently. Oh no. No! He bellows, thrashing wildly in an attempt to dislodge the insidious device. Blood! Uh, blood and pus spray from the wound, splattering the surrounding area in a grotesque display of bodily fluids. Uh, Trenton, run! Or as he manages to choke out between gasps of anguish, his eyes wild with terror and desperation. Get away from here before it's too late. I cannot bear the thought of you succumbing to the hard, hard fate as well. Uh. I run away. As Rexy says. says but I hoping that the condition won't get any worse no this is not funny As I flee, Rexy collapses onto the ground, his strength waning rapidly under the relentless assault of the machine's bites. The pain is unbearable, each con contraction of his muscles sending joint jolts of agony coursing through his decaying body. With a herculean effort, he forces himself to rise, he, his movements slow and labored, his vision blurs, and then he stumbles, barely managing to remain upright. Though grid teeth, he growls. I will not let it win. Each word is a testament to his indestructible will, even as his physical form crumbles beneath the onslaught of the cursed device. Chicken, chicken, I'm coming. Just hold on. This is creepy as feces.